Howdy, fuckheads. It is me again. I just recently escaped El Gulag after saying that there's only two genders. And ain't that a thing. Yes, and for some of you might be thinking, well, hang on, you're an Eastern European. Do they think there's more than two genders? Well, no, because I decided to went to a Western country. You what? I am not going to specify where I said, but when I said that uh, there's two more than two genders in a Western country, they decided to lock me up and put me in a fucking mental, uh, in the mental institute and leave me there. But thankfully, I had a couple of comrades that just broke me out and just fucking helped me out, and so now I'm back here. So today we're going to be talking about the Dying Light 2 gear armor, the Brawler. And so I'm going to be talking about the, uh, its effectiveness and its weak points. The same thing like it, the tank I, uh, on the video I made about the tank. And so we're just going to be talking about the differences between them and which one you should be using. Well, I'm mostly going to be talking about the brawler pack because it is a, it's basically the younger brother of the tank, essentially. So the brawler, it, to define it in a very short matter, it is one of the highest damage dealing gear, or pa gear packs in the game, mainly because of its bonuses that it provides to, mainly being one-handed weapons and knives. It is also the second tankiest uh, armor in the game, allowing you to s sustain some bit of damage, but not to the point where you're literally able to have a whole horde of enemies on top of you without having to worry, the, b because that title goes to the tank. The brawler, on the other hand, mainly prioritizes in dealing the highest amount of damage to a single enemy. It is incapable of uh, dealing high amounts of damage. Oh, I thought the FBI was knocking out my door. Excuse me. Anyway, the brawler perk deck, uh, perk deck, fucking hell. The brawler armor pack it mainly focuses on dealing the highest amount of damage on a single enemy in a short duration, mainly because of its um, uh, one-handed weapons be having a very fast swinging speed. And so, is it any good? Yes, I feel like it is one of the, also the most overrated one in my opinion. Well, not exactly overrated, but it's like widely used to say at least. I'm not hating on those that use the Brawler Pack, but I'm just saying, like, I, I keep seeing a lot of people uh, use it. Which, no hey, but it's just overrated. And so, yeah. So, the Brawler, what does the stati what type of statistics does the Brawler uh, have exactly? And what type of weapons you should be focusing? I know that sounds dumb, but I will get to that, get to that in a little bit. The armor itself, on a maximum armor value you get if you're max level, you get approximately 48 to 50, somewhere around there. Meanwhile, with the tank, you get at least uh, 60. And you might be thinking, well, that's not exactly a huge difference now, is it? It doesn't really seem that much big of a deal, but trust me when I say this, that 10 armor value d difference is th the difference between life and death. Do not fuck around when I say that the tank's certain arm or like certain pa uh, pieces of the brawler they don't even have any armor the gloves of the brawler doesn't have any extra armor that's the only part only piece of the brawler armor that do not have any bonus uh, protection it's only the tank that provides it and that's it but let's talk about the statistics that it can give you mostly. The three most common ones that you're going to be getting is a damage resistance against a specific enemy, those being either on infected or on human enemies. Unlike the tank, there is no bonus damage resistance when, say, like again during the day or during night or like a specific element. It doesn't have that. It only mainly prioritizes on uh, human enemies and infected. And another one you'll be finding mo most commonly is a stamina reduction against uh, melee weapons. Well, not exactly, but uh, but the way to like describe this is basically it uh, it decreases the amount of stamina you waste whenever you swing a melee weapon. Of course, you can get either on melee weapons, on parkour, or on bows and shit. But it mainly prioritizes in melee weapons. And of course, we can't forget about the uh, bonus damage increase on one-handed and knives. We can't forget about those. And that's pretty much it. There's really not much else to really talk about it. And I know some of you might be saying, Well, hang on. Doesn't the brawler have more percentages? Or like a uh, protection percentage uh, than the uh, tank? Like, say, the, uh, the tank has a 10% damage resistance against human enemies, meanwhile the brawler has 15%. Now you might think that is the case, but because the tank has a much more higher armor value, in total armor value, 
the percentages is only like half of it. Most of the protection you get from your armor, it does not come from the protect from the percentage itself. It mostly comes from the armor value, the value of the armor itself. The higher the number of the value, the higher the protection. And that percentage that the brawler has is nothing compared to the tank's uh, both per percentage protection and armor uh, value protection. It's kind of really hard to like very properly explain it, but that's the best I can do. And so, no, it is not tankier than the t than the uh, the tank armor. It will never be. And don't let people fool you, because I've seen a lot of people say that oh, the brawler is more tougher than this. When in reality, it's not. And so. Let's talk about the weapons exactly. There are three different types of weapons uh, that the brawler can use. One-handed axes, one-handed blunt weapons, well, four I should really be saying, I forgot. One-handed axes, one-handed blunt weapons, or slash sticks, one-handed machetes, and knives. And they're all different in their own little ways. You might assume that they all swing the same way or have the same, like, damage and shit. Well, damage. Obviously, it's different, but the way they behave against enemies that they uh, act actually far more differently. So let's talk about them. The knife is probably one of the more weaker ones against human enemies, but extremely effective against um, infected. Because I don't know if this is just me, but I don't I don't think I've ever seen the knife actually bounce off enemies before, and so I could be wrong. But uh, the knife is extremely effective to kill uh, kill more than two zombies because of its capability of hitting multiple targets with one swing which is weird but whatever but against human enemies it is not exactly effective because it doesn't really have that much modifications to begin with of course that could change when the update comes out the one where they announced it and I will be talking about the big update in my next video so stay tuned for that but back to the video the knife is perfect for killing uh, zombies but not exactly good against human enemies because of their tendency to ignore the staggering effect coming from the knives or they'll just like simply block it out and so only use it if there's like a whole, whole horde of enemies that are like about to surround you basically and let's talk about the machetes the machetes have the fastest swinging speed in the game but faster than the sticks and the axes well not exactly faster than the knife but it's like the second best to say at least and so, it is capable of dashing out huge amounts of damage, but because it actually bounces off enemies, it is not exactly effective against um, whole hordes of enemies. Of course, if, if, you, if you have one that is capable of one-shotting biters, then that doesn't really fucking matter. But we're, if we're talking about a normal player that doesn't have the best equipment, and we're just talking about like normal gear and shit, I'm just talking about that type of perspective. And so... The machetes are extremely fast, they're extremely easy to use, they're not difficult, and they're oh, effective, to say the least. The only downside being, because of how fast they are, you might accidentally hit a enemy, a human enemy that is like trying to block your attack. And you'll most likely see yourself just staggering a lot because you're hitting the same enemy that's blocking you. But here's the special part. The machete does not have the capability of one-shotting enemies. Now, this might sound weird, but there is a small little effect that a lot of people don't really know about. You see, whenever you're hitting a same target with a slicing weapon, axes, machetes, whatever, you have a percentage chance of cutting their specific part. If you're, example saying, uh, if you're hitting them on the same arm, constantly, that weapon you have, a machete as an example, has its chance of instantly cutting it out thus instantly killing the enemy. And so, the machete has a small chance of cutting it, cutting them out, but the axe, however, has a much higher chance of, um, cutting them. So, but it swings much more slower. The axe is just basically the machete, but slightly slower, but has a higher percentage chance to cut open a specific human part, or like a specific body part. So, machete for faster attack speed, but less chance to cut a limb is, uh, like, it makes, it basically makes the, uh, I'm fucking struggling, the body part of a person much more harder. Meanwhile, the axe, on the other hand, it doesn't really struggle that much. 
So the choice is up to you. Do you want a weapon that is capable of one-shotting enemies more frequently, but at a cost of slower swinging speed? Or do you want a machete that is capable of uh, swinging fast, but doesn't have the one-shotting capability that often? But the sticks, on the other hand, like hammers and whatnot, they have a unique mechanic. They are the slowest sw one-handed swinging weapon in the game. So, you have to be a little bit more cautious of what you swing it, because enemies will be able to dodge it much more quicker. And because of this, you have to be careful, and you might think, Wow, that sounds horrible, why would anyone want to use, use a one-handed hammer? Because of the concussion mechanic. For some of you that don't know, the concussion mechanic is a little white bar under the health. Basically, it, it, it just uh, determines how conscious the enemy is. The lower it is, the less likely they'll be more conscious and if the bar reaches to zero the next time you hit them will uh, will guarantee a knockdown meaning that you'll just like knock them on the ground and they have to like spend a few seconds trying to get back up and that's the good th mechanic about the uh, uh, sticks is despite having the slowest uh, swinging speed out of the other one-handed weapons it is capable of uh, stunning enemies if you hit them constantly. Like if you're just constantly dodging left and right like you're avoiding their line of sight and you're just like trying to hit them from behind and etc. This weapon is extremely good. Well, which one you should be using? Well, like I said, that's up to your personal preference and depending on what type of stat you get on your weapon. And so... You might be thinking, what type of, what are the main statistics or like bonus effects that the mach that my one hand weapon should have? It should have two things. Uh, you should have two weapons for two different things. One, have a melee weapon that has a bonus damage increase on a specific yeah. enemy or Never in a specific a time. A like say, bonus damage against infected human enemies during the day, during the night. And you like should have another melee weapon that has these two stats. Stamina regeneration on quick attacks or power attacks. So you can just basically keep on swinging without ever be, uh, being tired because they will come to a certain point where you will run out of stamina and then you don't have an attempt to sort of like run back and say at least. And so, uh, these two things together are the main, these, like, these four statistics are, like, uh, the most important things you should be focused on getting, but, it should, but of course, you know, it up, it's up to your personal preference, like, do whatever the fuck you want. I'm not saying use this, because if you don't, you're a fucking coward, etc. Use whatever you want, I'm not really holding your hand here. But what type of modification should you be using? On the tip of the weapon, you should mainly prioritize on using something that char builds up. So, whenever you hit an enemy and it charges up, and then you just hit him with the power attack to activate it. Because one-headed weapons have a really fast swinging speed, you don't really have to worry about, like, predicting or, like, faking your hits, because Renegades have a very common tendency of dodging your heavy attacks if you constantly use them. But if you fake it out, yes, you can do that, if you fake it out and then you hit them again, they don't have enough time to react to it. And that's pretty much it. On the shaft of the weapon, you should have something that allows you to shoot it out. Like, say, shooting out AIs or, like, blasting them away. Use whatever you want, as long as it's, like, a blasting effect. Or, or use something that activates on critical hits. Because you swing very fast, the crit chances uh, will happen much more often. And the grip of it, I would highly suggest grabbing durability because of how fast they fucking break because of the swinging speed. And that's pretty much it. To briefly summarize it, the brawler is extremely effective against single enemies, but struggles against hordes of enemies, or if you're like fought, fighting multiple people. And you might be thinking, what about skills? What about, what about the ground pound smash, or like this spinning attack? Well, they are effective, but because they are a short weapon and not exactly lengthy, like the fucking big-ass swords and the big-ass axes the tank can use, it is, you're able... well, you're sort of struggling to kill multiple targets. Don't get me wrong, it is still effective uh, to use, but it's not as effective as the tank's uh, two-handed weapons because, well, they have bigger range and you don't. And let's talk about the design of it. I understand what they were uh, trying to go with, but um, I do genuinely like the outfit so far. I understand what they were trying to go with, but I'm, one part I'm not really a huge fan of is the jacket. The jacket is probably my biggest complaint. It's not exactly... 
colorful, to say the least. Like, it's not... Like, I understand what they were trying to go with, don't get me wrong. But I do genuinely like the design of the headgear, the gloves, the pants, and everything. I love it. But the, the jacket... Yeah, I'm not really a huge fan, fan of it, honestly. But that's probably just me. And here it is. The tank... Uh, well, the tank. I'm a fucking idiot. The brawler is very simple. Very easy to use, not overly complicated, and that's pretty much it. Should you be using it? I would say so, yeah. It's pretty good, but I would highly suggest, like... But... I'd highly suggest combining both of them together. Both the tank and the brawler. So you have two fucking... Th you have the endurance, or like the toughness effect of a tank, but you also have the strength of a brawler. But, of course, do whatever the fuck you want. Do whatever you want, but these are just my suggestions and my opinion on what you should be doing with uh, the brawler uh, gear armor. And that's pretty much it. Uh, there's really not much else to say. The only th complaint I would say that the brawler outfit has is in its capability to fight hordes of enemies that quickly. Biters is not an issue, but I'm ma only ta mainly talking about volatiles or... Uh, or, um, virals. The tank is capable of killing them easily because their weapon is able to hit multiple targets because of how fucking heavy they are. But because one-handed weapons are lighter and they don't really pierce that much, you're gonna sort of struggle a little bit. So you have to be very cautious of how you approach a hordes of enemies that uh, that much. And that's it. That's really not much, not much to talk about. I'm sorry if the video feels a little bit rushed, I just want to get this out because holy shit, the last time I uploaded a actual video was like 10 days ago and I don't want you guys to be waiting for that much. And that's pretty much it. I don't really know what else to really talk about besides that. Hope you enjoy it. And in the next video, I'll be talking about the big update that's going to be coming. Well, not the big update, but I'm going to specify or like talk about one big part of it. That's it. Goodbye. Ooh. <sighs>